Hello and welcome to round one with Stitchwing Dredge. In modern, I will play first. And that is not a hand you can come remotely close to keeping. This hand looks a little better. We're not going to dredge super hard, but uh, you get to do a few things. I'll keep this. I'm looking for a land or a faithless looting. That's good. The reason I want a land... so that I can uh, actually build to stitch wing scabs and stuff out of the graveyard. I don't see a reason to cast Insolent Neonate here, given my upcoming card. Uh, I actually want to draw the thing that I scried. I'm willing to give up a turn with this hand to be able to activate a few more of my cards. Um, it's possible this deck wants a loam, but I'm not super excited by the prospect. So we're going to be... Hmm. I guess you have Dakmore Salvage to do a lot of that job. This is a hand where I'm very glad that I drew uh, Knot of the Bone. I'm going to be sacrificing this so I get a life out of it anyway, so that's kind of lucky. Oh, jeez. We're playing against something else? Some kind of Kiln Fiend deck, probably? Pseudo Kiln Fiend deck? Well, I definitely want to Neonate here. So I think I'm 100% supposed to block. Let me dredge Grave Troll. I want to dredge salvage. Well, that's an unfortunate draw. I would have loved, or unfortunate dredge. I would have loved to draw the lands. So, what is my line next turn? Also, I don't have another dredge card in graveyard, which is really awkward. I just don't have creatures. Just none of this is working out right now. This might be a cast Stinkweed Imp turn, honestly. Like, if I get bolted, I get bolted. If I don't get bolted... This is probably something else. Yeah, I don't mind casting Imp here. If I have another turn. For 12, so not lethal. Yeah, not dead to Teamer Battle Rage here. Opponent needs another spell for that. So this is a 4 after Battle Rage, and this is a 6, and that's 16. Pretty close to dead, though. Feels like my opponent should fire it off if they have it. This is actually like an aspect of the dredge deck that I don't mind in modern, is that you can just uh, cast a bunch of Stinkweed Imps. Kind of interesting. It feels like my opponent almost wanted to uh, save the bolt. I don't know what their hand is, but it's worth considering that my opponent could have saved the bolt there for uh, a plus of prowess. Unless their mana lines up perfectly. Bolt to the face kills me? Three, four, five, six, seven, nine. So not lethal if I counted right. 
So in theory, not dead if I hit a good dredge. I did not, though. <sighs> That's a very sad state of dredges. So I can gain back one, two, three, six life. I guess I'm not technically dead here. Dead to any spell my opponent can cast. They're one mana up. It's likely their main deck counters dispel, I guess. I could have uh, gnawed on my main phase, I guess. I probably should have. This way I can die to, like, remand or something. Oh, is there another creature in there that I missed? Oh, the neonate all the way at the bottom. Sure. Jeez. So I have to play this to chump block. I'm not sure where I get from here, though. I need my opponent to draw a non-spell card here. Okay. Uh, do I actually want to draw? I have to draw one of these cards. I don't want to. I'm at one, so I can't even cast the neonate. Uh, yeah, I'm actually just dead. Yeah. Well, this card's good, this card's good, this card's good, this card's very good. Uh, these cards aren't bad either. Disregard all this nonsense. I don't need to rally against my opponent's deck. Uh... Can cut like a blood gas or two. I like lightning axe a lot here, actually. I don't think I need a second knot of the bone. My opponent's not really burning me out. This is just like stabilizing. Uh, I like Pharaoh. Conflagrate's okay. It's not great against the 1-3s and stuff. Dark Blast is only good against Delver, I guess. The question is, Blood Gas better than Stitchwing? I want to try more games with Stitchwing before I make a decision, so... And I'll leave in Blood Ga or, uh, Dark Blast over anything else, because it, the worst case scenario, it is a dredge card still. This hand looks good. I don't know what the opposite of what you want to see is, but that's part of it. Yeah, the number of Narcomibas you draw with Dredge is kind of correlated to how good your deck is. Or how good your deck performs that game. We paid two life for the mana. Yeah, so that's a case that doesn't make sense. You can pay two life, and then you have the option of what you want to do with the steam vents after you've drawn a card. You can just, uh, you know, have the steam vents enter the battlefield tapped and just whatever. Uh, let's get back troll here, because I just want to velocity through stuff. I've got a blood gas, a pharaoh. Two blood gas is pretty good. Um, 
Yeah, let's save a little life up front. I don't need to get too far on my lands. I have all the lands I need, really. You know, if I burn out this mine, I still get to do stuff. This is a decent start, but we'll see. Not quite sold on the power level yet. Making five power on turn two is normal, like while in the cuddle draws. Take my two, dredge the imp, cast the imp, I think, this turn. Wait, that. None of this works for my opponent. Literally nothing they want to do because of Vengeful Pharaoh. Yeah, based on uh, Jason Chung's top eight at Grand Prix Auckland, was that where it was? The Eldrazi one. What just happened? Did I get Simeon Spirit Guide fork bolted? Okay. Uh, based on that, I think this is one of the more powerful dredge... Uh, things to do. Uh, how heavy do I want to dredge this turn? Don't think I need to go that hard. I also just, this is again, I don't have a dredge creature in my graveyard. I think this deck needs a little bit more on that front. I can flashback looting and put two down there, or I can cast imp. I really like the idea of having an imp on the battlefield, honestly. It just feels really good against my opponent. I mean, I have the pharaoh, obviously, but like, this seems like a great way to establish control of the battlefield. Um... Also, my opponent's approaching chip shot range. Yep. Bunch of cantrips. A lot of nothing going on. I'll block. So, I think this... Is where... Oh, sure. That's how that works. Liked looting. Should play Mana Confluence first so I don't have to deal with triggers. Attack with everything. Let's do some math. So, mutagenics 3. I'm at 15, so that's 4, 10. My opponent would have to have some really absurd combination of things for me to die next turn. Uh, so, they can't really attack necessarily. Yeah, I think I'm okay. I was counting team or battle rage math. So, mutagenics plus 3 to make this a 4. Battle rage is 5 power, so 10 damage. Yeah. Uh, the card's great. Really need that. Kind of want a blood gas back in the deck. I'm using my mana a lot more than I thought I was. I think maybe uh, there might be one too many stitch wings then. At least here ish. Though being able to discard cards is very powerful.
Sounds good. This is very hard for my opponent to beat. I think the sequencing here... I guess we'll see what happens. So I'm getting probed. So I can go axe, discard this, this, this on two. Okay, well I'm just going to neonate on one then. And I don't think there's any reason to immediately neonate, though it is worth noting I should be neonating on my opponent's second main phase, if I remember the text on Prize Amalgam correctly. Um, because if I neonate on my opponent's end step, I guess there's like sudden shock in this format that I shouldn't just randomly get mized out by. You know, I'm willing to give my opponent the opportunity to sudden shock me if they did it. Can't actually, yeah, that's also another reason I can block the Swiss Spear this turn. Uh, but you have to do this before end step because if you amalgam plus an Archimiba, uh, the amalgam trigger would return it on my end step instead of my opponent's end step. What did we hit? Uh, Stitchwing and an amalgam and an Archimiba and basically the Dreamboat. Okay, yeah, great. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, Amalgam returns at the beginning of the next end step to prevent any weird loops. Uh, so you have to have your creature enter the battlefield before the end step of that turn so that the next end step is not your opponent's. Uh, your next end step, so you actually have an attack step. So I think I'm supposed to upkeep Axe the... Why does this tap on end step? That's so weird. I guess if it's sure end step. Anyways, I'm going to Axe the, the uh, Swiss Spear. Discard Stinkweed on upkeep. Dredge Stinkweed for turn. Axe is just great in this deck. I would not be opposed to some number of main deck acts. I guess there are some decks where it doesn't have a target, but maybe you're just supposed to board it against everything with a target. So I'm just going to... Axe that so I can attack for a large amount. And also dredge. If there's a mutagen, what do I do? Probably dredge and evaluate my spot afterwards. I've got some scabs, but they're not really doing a lot. I think I'm just supposed to re-up on Axe. And just bash for so much damage that it's not even funny. If my opponent has another mutagenic, we're just wasting all of their cards. Also, this becomes a 6 toughness creature, so it can't actually... Yeah, there we go. Can't block anything without dying. Uh, wasting specifically the card that adds the most damage in the team or battle rage scenario is also very important. Also, my opponent's very close to dead here. This is definitely a uh, double storm chaser on blocking duty spot for them. Can I die from 16, so this is a 2, 
five, six. It involves double mutagenic growth. Hooray, I did the thing. Uh, well, what I learned there is that the Lightning Axe Vengeful Pharaoh interaction beats certain decks straight up, and that is more powerful than the main creature engine so far.